welcome back to Muscle News Weekly with me, IFBB Pro, Rosie Rascal Hart, and Giles Thomas. Hello. Had a good week? Yeah, really good week. Um, how about yourself? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Um, had a bit of an issue with my heart, so I um, went to the doctor's. And uh, but I've got palpitations, to heart skip, and I've had it on and off for years. But um, doc thinks it doctor thinks it's stress. Mm. So uh, I don't feel stressed out at the moment. I feel pretty happy, but a lot going yeah, but on. You have been stressed, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, a lot going on. Anyway, let's talk about the world of bodybuilding, which is why we're here. Um, we have got a seriously packed show this week, so we're going to try and get through this as best as we can. Try and fit everything in. But uh, first of all, let's talk about FIBO. Yes, um, we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not go. No, we didn't go this year. Uh, I've actually only been to FIBO once. Have you been to FIBO? No, never been. Um, been to Germany a few times, but I've never actually been there for FIBO. So That's why I got your glute wine. Yeah, I've got my glute wine cup which i stole oh, i was gonna say that i stole she did she stole it from the christmas market but they kind of expect that surely uh it doesn't make it right i think it's like you're allowed to steal one i just kind of had my but we had had three glute vines so i was feeling a bit mischievous so yeah. i slipped it into my handbag <laughs> yeah Disgraceful. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, you've never been to FIBO? Nope. Okay, well, imagine Body Power Expo, the UK one, but 10 times bigger. Is it bigger than Arnold? Not bigger than Arnold, it's, or about the same? It's about 50 times bigger than the Arnold's Expo. Serious? It's huge. Oh, what? You need serious walking shoes if you're going to go to that. That's intense. It is very intense. Now, I the only first and only time I've been to FIBO was in 2014 which was before I started my position as UK market manager mm -hmm. with Ronnie Coleman's company, uh, RCSS. And they said, I started in the May, and this, this was uh, a few weeks before I started. They said, look, let's get you trained up. Um, we'll send you over to FIBO, and you can work the first two days on the stand, work with Ronnie. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, so I paid for my tickets. And uh, I went over and obviously spent some time with Ronnie. And, and, uh, and, and, and I, I went on the third day. I went back on the Saturday, and I said to Sean, the guy I was working with, I said, oh, I am so tired, mate. I said, that, that was pretty hectic. And he says, no, Giles. He says, you've left before it gets busy. Yeah. He said, the first two days, he says, they're nothing. He says, what will – I'll send you some video – on, uh, on the Saturday and Sunday. He said, because it is that busy, it's that crazy. They're very challenging, aren't they? Yeah. I think, uh, like as well for me, because I'm so small, when you try to walk around those expos, oh. I find it quite, um, like, like it gives me a bit of anxiety because I can't yeah. get through the crowds. I get like that at the Arnold Expo. It gets too busy. That's why I, prefer, I actually prefer the Olympia Expo because it's not as busy and you can actually get around. Yeah. But, um, the thing is, though, the most people you're ever around is in Sainsbury's supermarket, so absolutely. I can imagine an expo would be <laughs> yeah, quite an experience for you. Yeah, I do, I, I, I'm on the verge of freaking out many times. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so anyway, so I went that year, 2014, and um, yeah, it's, it's something that if you want to even, you have you can't see it all unless you plan to do miles and miles of walking. Yeah. So you've really got to go, because it's not just supplements, there's things like equipment manufacturers from all over the world. Um, there's all different sports. I mean, it has grown and grown and grown. That was started in the 1980s by a bodybuilder called John, the idea, the concept was a bodybuilder called John Brown, mm -hmm. uh, a guy who mentored Sean Ray, Vince Taylor with their posing, uh, quite a well-known pro in the 80s and 90s. So, um, Is um, Ronnie over there this year then? Well, funny you should say that. Ah. Because, oh, you've spoiled the surprise now. That's not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, well, let's cut to someone we've just been talking about, um, who's given us, <laughs> who's, who's, who's been kind enough to send, send us, kind enough to send us this little clip, so Can check this out. who it is? <laughs> Ooh, um, yeah, check this out. What's up, guys? Big Ron here. I want to give a shout out to Rosie and Giles, and all the guys at MD. We're over here at the 2018 FIBO. I'm healing up real good on the road to recovery. Can't wait to get back in the gym. Hope it'll be real soon. Yeah, buddy. I wait, baby. And never be done. Okay. You can say yes, please. I'm gonna do this. 
always a pleasure. Um, it's really good to see you, and it's good to see your recovery still going well. Oh, yeah, I'm hanging in there. You know me, I ain't got no other choice. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And he never stops smiling. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> so, what do you think of that? Love Ronnie. We love Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie's cool. Yeah, Ronnie. Ronnie? <laughs> Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie and um, his team, we, we have a big soft spot for all the RCSS yeah. lot. I was we? talking to Ronnie's business partner, Brendan, there about, about two hours ago on the phone, just messaging back and forth, asking him how it went. Yeah. He said it was really good, really productive. Um, funny story, actually, I've got a FIBO was the, the one that, because I would only be, this was in 2014, and I, it was only six months before I'd been diagnosed diabetic. So I was still trying to get to grips with that at the time. I was still taking, I'm going to take a lot of insulin and trying to get the blood sugars right. And uh, the one night we, I was so tired, this suddenly, I think it was on the second day I was, I was there, all stayed at the hotel. And we all stayed at the same hotel, a lot of the athletes, a lot of the, uh, the, the pros and all that. And um, there was like a free hotel restaurant section for all the people that were part of FIBA. So everyone, you'd, you know, all the pros, you'd, you know, were all eating there. Mm-hmm. So uh, Ronnie and that lot said, Giles, you come in training? And I went, I, said, I don't, I didn't feel too good. I was kind of, you know, blood sugar was high, then it was low and I was having high pose. Yeah. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to, I'm going to get some food here and I'm going to get an early night because we've got, um, well, it would have been after the first day. So it would have been, yeah, for the second day. So I was, you know, full of energy. So, um, yeah. So anyway, I went there. They went off training after a long day. And uh, I was there and I was getting some food and Jay Cutler stood next to me. And he said, hey, Giles, hey, Giles. I said, yeah, yeah, I said, oh, um, uh, he said, what are you doing here? I said, oh, I'm with Ronnie. And he said, oh, cool. He said, uh, well, where are the guys then? I said, oh, they've gone to the gym. And he said, well, you're by yourself. He said, yeah, come and sit with me and Phil. So I was like, Phil? <laughs> I looked over and it was Phil Heath. And, um, and, I, and it's funny because Jay actually uh, introduced me to Phil. And Phil said, hi, I'm Phil Heath. I love that. I love the way he did that. Lila Brada did that. And I'm like, of course I know who you are. And I actually said, no, I never heard of you, mate. <laughs> and then Jay laughed. And Jay's kind of looked at Phil. He says, this is Giles. You know, he's a good guy. He's cool. And uh, Phil was really, and we, I, I basically had my food with him. I feel like you've told this story already in like episode one or something. <laughs> Quite possibly. Well, it's FIBO related, so I'm telling it again. Thank you. <laughs> So, oh yeah, shit, I did, yeah. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, cut a long story short, yeah. So, story. No, but this is, this is, this is a funny story because um, I was actually, uh, I was trying to be discreet about taking my insulin under the table uh. and uh, Phil kind of stops talking and he looks over and he looks down because he hears the clicking of the pen. And he says, Giles, what you got there? And I said, oh, it's just uh, insulin. He went, oh, right. He says, I thought it was an electronic cigarette. <laughs> Why would you be smoking said, it down there? I said, no, no, no. I said, it's insulin. I said, do you want some? <laughs> anyway, no, thanks. I'm good, thanks. But, um, but yeah, so that was my experience of FIBO. It was really, really good. Um, and like I said, it's, it's pretty intense. But um, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of expos. I like going to the shows and I will have a little look around the expo, but I'm not someone that would travel somewhere specifically to go to I an expo. I don't mind working on the stand. Yeah, I don't mind working them. When we worked, I did two years with, on the Ronnie Coleman stand and I absolutely loved every minute of it. Three. With, did we do three? Was it three? Might have been three. No, I think there was only two. 14, two, 15, two, 16. Two body powers. 14, 15, 16. Yeah, possibly. Might I can't right. remember. Anyway, it was a scream. Yeah, it was good. Love right? Sean oh. and Brendan and Ronnie. Any funny stories from Ronnie? Working with um, Ronnie on the stand? Working with Ronnie on the stand when someone said called me Mrs. Coleman. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Coleman, can I get a picture? I was like, I'm not Ronnie's wife. <laughs> yeah, they said the same to me as well. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, good experiences. Um, hopefully we'll be there next year with your stand. Yes, with, with the supplement. Rosie Rascal stand. We've got some pretty good, could, uh, pre- if we can implement the idea that we have thought of, Yeah. how cool would that be? Very cool, yeah. Be... Uh, very different to all the other, mm. which is like what I am anyway, aren't I? Quite unique. Different. <laughs> yeah, different. Special. Yeah. <laughs> Special. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about the contest that was yesterday, the pro contest that was very near to us, and mm-hmm. that was the muscle contest mm. in Ireland. Yeah, super exciting because, you know, like I think the people in Ireland have, um, for, for a while they didn't have any IFBB at all, did they? No, and I think this has to be, I'm pretty sure this is the first pro show they've ever had. Yeah. 
And I mean, it's only, I'm sure it was only like recently, recently that they even started having IFBB again over there. Correct. Yeah. So for the Irish, it, it must be a real buzz over there, all mm. the gyms and because they've got some good talent. Very. They have got some really good talent in, in amateur mm -hmm. and, and obviously now pro because, um, yep. They're going to get the, the pro cards there. So. But obviously, these are open shows, these pro ams, so anyone from anywhere can come and compete. Like, yeah. it, like at the, the Royal the London, London one, yeah, yeah, the two pros pro yeah. there. So it's a similar format, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, a good friend of yours uh, and ours, Charlie Marsden. Yeah, right? Marden. 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 Um, yeah, he won his, what class was he in? Classic. classic. Yeah, classic. Uh, was the, is there like a weight? Uh, oh, it's just classic. It's, no, it, there is a height and weight ratio. So it, it's based upon your height. But you're just classic. Yeah. Right. So he got first in whatever he was in. Um, in but, his height class. In his height class. But he didn't go He didn't go on to win the overall, but I think it was quite close by the sounds of it. Yeah. And he looked incredible. So I think he's really, like, mm. knocking on the door, isn't he? You see, this is what I like about the classic class, because someone like Charlie, he's he's like me. He's tall. He's, he's, he's probably taller than me, maybe 6'2". Yeah. 6'1", six, 6'2". Six six and the problem with these guys, with those kind of frames, they're never – they're, they're not – People always say, oh, you need another 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. And this is a guy that if he'd have gone down the super heavyweight route or the height class, because he did quite well at the Nabi Universe in his height class and the tall class. But everyone kept saying, yeah, you're good. You just need more size. You've got that big frame. It needs to fill out. So someone like Charlie, he would always be accused of, you know, having to sort of put more size on. So the classic now for him is perfect. Like I saw a few weeks ago and I said, God, he looks so healthy. He looks mm. so, he looks athletic. Because before when he was like over probably, I mean, 280s, not even, you know, he could still fit a lot more size on. You know, he, like I said, it's just one of those things really. But. And funnily enough, because he always used to struggle with his condition, and I think this time he probably got the sharpest mm. I've ever seen him. Uh, mm -hmm. And this was by prepping and actually having to lose muscle. Proper, yeah, possibly, Because he had to lose possibly. a lot of weight. Mm. Or maybe it was the pressure of having to meet the weight that mm. actually just got him shredded. Possibly, possibly. Um. We'll never know. <laughs> no, no, we'll never. And also, you're uh, someone you were working with last year. Yeah, uh, a lady called Emma Gormley. Um, I was working with her for two years. Um, she won the universe Ooh. when she was with me. And then her and her partner, Dave, I think, have just worked together this year. And she got her pro card. So I'm Fantastic. super pleased because she's an amazing athlete and she deserves it. Let's cut to a bit of a, a few clips of and a few photos of yeah. Uh, of Emma. Yeah. So anyway, check this is out. This is Emma. This is uh, Women's Physique Pro from Ireland. New pro, yeah. Uh, Women's Physique. So check her out. Okay, yeah, so fantastic result there for Emma. I'm really thrilled. Yeah, and I think you have to just bow down to the glutes. Mm. Incredible glutes. <laughs> <laughs> but she built those. Like, remember you showed me some before and after pictures and her progress pictures it was last year. Yeah. And I remember we went over to see her, I think, in the February, and, and I remember saying she needs more glutes, a bit more this, yeah. you know. And then I saw some photos. It was like eight weeks later she built these She glutes. has a very good work ethic. She can train yeah. like a beast. So she's, she's one of them that can just like, if you told her that she needed to improve something, a few weeks later, oh. it'll be better. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. She just built like a, this amazing set of glutes in like six to eight weeks. Yeah, wicked. 
Anyway, obviously the main draw of that show was the 212, which, as I said, was possibly the first two, uh, first pro show in Ireland. Um, I can certainly recall anyway. And the winner was, well, was it a surprise, Dave Henry? No, that? and from the pictures, he looks incredible. Mm. Um, yeah, and then Sammy... Sammy Al Haddad, another second, second place. Second, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's been sec- he's been second now at um, uh, New Zealand, Australia, and now I think it's a lot of travelling as well. How many times would you need to get second to get your points? He's going to get a lot of points. What- I-, I would pretty much say he's comfortable to prep for the Olympia because I'm sure he will have. He's surely accrued enough points now mm. to get through. But the thing is, what does he do now? Does he think shall I shall I hedge my bets and? try and, you know, get through on points, or do I go for another show? More travelling, more expense. It's It's tough, isn't it? It's tough. It's really tough because then you're just risking, I mean, I guess everyone's different, but you're risking then qualifying for the Olympia and then coming in, like, nowhere near your best because you kind of burnt out from all the preps. I don't know. Some people say they get better and better each time, don't they? So Mm. it depends what he's like. I mean, I've never, never seen him off. Mm. I just think uh, it's tough on the body. It's just tough doing that traveling. You know, I'm sure you'd much rather be home now, getting into a bit of an off-season plan and, you know, hopefully preparing for the Olympia to try and get back into that top five. Because yeah. Sammy at his best, he's top six Olympia material. I mean, he's really good. I mean, like I said, 2012, in when I went to Prague and the British Grand Prix, he was second to Flex Lewis and they were being called out together. What do you think it is that's holding him back from, like, winning and outright first is there anything that he could do with his no. physique because he's kind of he's just getting beat by better guys yeah that's what it comes down to the the the, the, the um the guy who, uh, J- Jafar, who won the two the last two and then he's going up against dave henry who's peaking so it's just purely unlucky yeah Results. third place was ahmed ahmed uh iraqi I believe he's connected. I think he lives in Sweden because I know he's part of the Gasp clothing team. Mm-hmm. I was really pleased he got third because he was supposed to do, I believe he was supposed to do the New Zealand. But um, for some reason, he was a no-show. So I'm glad he's uh, competed now anyway. So that's a really good result for him. He's really good. Uh, some of the widest shoulders I've ever seen, apart from Derek Lunsford in 212. Um, fourth place, Vojtek, a guy called Vojtek. I can't even pronounce his last name. In fact, I'll bring up the results. Yeah, let's bring up the results now. Um, check it out now. Okay. Well, talking of 212s, mm-hmm. who's the biggest... 212 sensation right now. Mm. Arnold? Arnold. Classic? Classic. Kamal? Kamal. Kamal Al Gardner. My very good friend, Kamal, I've known. Oh, yeah, Kamal. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've known Kamal, as I said, for nearly 20 years now. So um, he's been such a sensation winning the 212 at the Arnold in his first pro show at age 46. Um, I've talked about Kamal many times on this show. So. I'll hand it over to him to give us an update. Check this out. Cool. Hi, Giles. Hi, Rosie. Just um, to let you know the update of my uh, um, prep for the Olympia. Everything is going well. Uh, I've got plenty of time, um, maybe to play up with. So um, we set up a plan, me and Chris. Hopefully, I'm hoping to be a little bit bigger. But uh, that's all up to Chris. But I feel safe, I feel healthy, I've got plenty of time. So I'll see you there, I'll let you more time and I'll let you um, how's the update for the club for the Olympia. Well, obviously, that's a great update from Kamal. Really appreciate the, the, the frequent updates. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to seeing how he's going to do at the Olympia this year. Mm. I'm really excited to see that because he, I don't think he was even at his best at the Arnold. And he was beating Dave Henry, Jose Raymond, um, the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Charles Dixon, all those amazing 212s. And it's the Arnold Classic. Dave so, Henry was there as well. Dave Henry, yeah. Uh, uh, Dave Henry, yeah. Uh, Samir Trudy. Mm. So... 
uh, I think we'll have to go down and see Kamal do some filming because, like I said, he's only a few hours away and he's got a fantastic gym. Put it in the diary. Put it in the diary. I'll be there. Right. Any guesses who I want to talk about next? Is it our friend? It's our friend who's also going in for the Cali Pro in just under six weeks' time. Yeah. Uh, a guy from California. Do you want to yeah, us? Our, our good friend Gerald Williams, who we uh, spent some time chatting to at. Was it Europe. Arnold Europe? Yeah. Um, we've mentioned him before. Super interesting guy. Mm. If you ever get to follow him on social media or get the chance to speak to him over breakfast like we do at the shows, yeah. then it's, it's a, a real joy. But um, he sent me over his book, The uh, 25th Hour. And actually the foreword was by Jay Cutler. So Jay Cutler helped him with the... The and, and Jay wouldn't endorse him if he was an idiot, would he? <laughs> no, no. And um, it's uh, like a motivational kind of book, and um, it goes into like everything that I love really about mm. the way that you can use your mind to to perform better mm. and everything. So I'm going to be reading this book for you all and give you a little review because. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm sure I can find some real nuggets mm. of helpful information in there to highlight. Cool. Well, Gerald's been so kind to send us several updates, not just on his bodybuilding, but also him teaching in the classroom. So let's go to that now and we'll discuss it afterwards. What's up, MD family? This is IFBB Pro Gerald Williams. I'm coming to you. It's uh, about 11.30 on a Sunday night here. Just finished doing some legs. You see the gym's uh, real packed busy tonight uh, so Tiger asked me to talk about my plans for 2018 um, you know I got a lot of other things outside of bodybuilding that I definitely have big plans on with my life and just moving things around but as far as the stage is concerned uh, Matt Berzicott who I've been working with since 2015 and I came back to the sport he and I have been mapping out a game plan uh, for me to be bigger uh, the body parts that I'm really strong in are gonna be even stronger uh, top last year's conditioning in the fall um, and just really come out and have fun. We're trying different things. We've had more time together. Uh, so this is going to be exciting. It's going to be a big year. I'm excited to get on stage and compete and show the world what I've got. Later. And you know, if you've done this work, if you've been in the California system for more than five years, there are a lot of things that are coming on. No more star testing, no more, you know, California high school essay exam, none of that stuff. Things that have gone and moved and all the indicators that we would have hoped to have had have shifted and changed. So we've got to figure out other, th other ways around it. So initially we started off with the task force and that was a real research base, right? That was saying that we're gonna dive into the literature as um, uncultur un unculturally responsive as it might be at times and say, what are we finding? And out of that literature, we lifted up recommendations that came out. And Tony Freeman was actually one of my one of my biggest mentors. I trained with Tony for the 07 and 08 Olympias oh, wow. um, when I was living in Atlanta. Um, and just, yeah, he has, I think his philosophy has definitely had a huge impact on, on me and how I shaped Tony. It's really good to hear. Yeah. Rosie, that, that is a beard. Yeah, I love a beard. Yeah, yeah I like a, a it's quite big old beard. Yeah. That's why I always tell you not to shave. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, so Gerald is going to go up against Sasan Harati. Now, Gerald won the Cali Pro last year and beat Sasan. And it was a very, very close decision. Very, very, uh, two very kind of different physiques. Um, and obviously, he's, Gerald's been looking to really bring his physique up since last year mm. because he, in fact, I'm going to bring this photo up. Now, this is a photo of Gerald I took with my phone. And he's next to the winner, sorry, the second, the runner up, William Bonac. And this was at the Arnold Europe. Have a look at this and see how well he compares. And do you know another thing I like about Gerald? Mm. He's a good poser. I was just about to say that. Sorry. Yeah, he's a really beautiful poser. He goes um, very uh, classic uh, po striking poses. So mm -hmm. um, with a little bit more thickness everywhere, mm. can you imagine what those poses are going to look like? He's got a lovely structure, lovely condition, lovely yeah. clean lines. Um, it's just a really nice prospect for the future, and he's in his already in his what's his first year. He won a pro show. He's yeah. getting it. You know, he's he's he's, he's got that, he did a pretty good show in at the Olympia, and he's very smart. Yeah. Like he wants to do it 
slowly, mm. not be like trying to rush to put on crazy size in one year or anything. It's like I think he enjoys the process so much of learning yeah. and and figuring out different ways of kind of uh, creating that perfect physique. Mm-hmm. So it's not just all about size, size, size. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Rosie, I want to ask you a very important question. Okay. Why is blood work so important? Um, so you don't die. Well. <laughs> no, um, I guess, like, not even just for athletes and not just for bodybuilders, mm. but just for anyone, it's good to kind of... Because sometimes you can feel fine, mm. but you don't really know what's going on. Um, underneath it all, you don't know what your levels are. So for people that are kind of doing extreme sports and extreme dieting... You've got to know where Jet your skiing. markers are. Yeah, you got <laughs> you, You've got to know where all your hormones are, and yeah. not not just to stay alive, which of course is beneficial if you want to. But if you want to really progress in whatever you're doing, mm-hmm. you could be. It, it's it's a game of push and pull. You know, if you're just like trying to 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 keep going yeah. and and there's something wrong, um, even if it's something very small, um, you, you're you going to be doing damage and actually you're never really going to progress because there's something that's, there's a little barrier that yeah. needs, needs attention. Well, I've always used blood work, especially when I was competing. I had at least twice a year, sometimes before a contest, sometimes after a contest. Yeah. And I have had things that have flagged up that I had no idea about. Like I've had high cholesterol. Mm-hmm. I've had um, now my, my diabetes. Now I probably had diabetes for quite a while before I ever actually got so bad that I needed to be hospitalized. Yeah. And then I, that's what I was told. Maybe it could have been flagged up a long time before, you know, because yeah. obviously I stopped competing a few years ago. But um, also the thing is, it's okay to get the blood work done, but you need to make sure you have someone that can read it and yeah, and yeah. tell you make how to make sense of it, and then what to do after that. Like yeah. I know um, Jordan Peters is good at that. The the our Brit guy mm-hmm. who's going to be doing a column mm-hmm. in the magazine. Um, you know he he can read blood work very well and knows what it all means, but. The thing is, sometimes certain things with bodybuilders can be slightly elevated yeah. and it's nothing to worry about. So you need, so you could see something on a, on a blood sheet result and think, oh no. Well, a doctor would tell you that it was oh. really worrying. And it's not. Yeah. So there's there's lots of things to, to think about. And um, there's also different, you don't, like if you were too scared to go to the doctors because you didn't mm. want to speak to them openly, even though actually I think most of them are quite, good to be honest if you speak openly yeah but if you didn't want to go down that route you can get there's loads of testing now online you can get oh, okay like the testing genova that i got all my gut function tested mm-hmm. you can get all sorts of things that you can get like a full hormone oh, panel uh check you can get separate ones so you could just get your thyroid done you could just get your testosterone checked mm. um yeah, so there's loads of loads of ways of getting it done now. Um, Have you ever had any issues with your blood work? Anything flagged up or? Um, yeah, I've had. Um, I remember I got checked once, and it came back that I had a low thyroid. Oh, okay. But actually, um, some fat burners. Um, make your thyroid right uh, Can suppress, suppress your suppress thyroid. It, yeah. So. Um, it's funny because I was, I didn't understand at the time. I was like absolutely shredded and I was like thinking, low thyroid, what are they talking about? <laughs> and like, I didn't understand yeah. that it was because of the fat burners. They'd suppress my natural. Right. I see. So then it came up as, as low. Um, Crazy. yeah, but I mean, I go about twice a year and get my blood work done. Would you say minimum twice a year? Yeah. If you're competing or even non-competing and being bodybuild, being a bodybuilder and training and... Yeah, you know. and also that something I'd like to get done now is you can go and get... Um, I don't know what you call it, actually. It's like a, a genetic... Oh, is that the DNA? Genetic, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you can test to see... Um, 
maybe like what you're predisposed to and then you could tweak your diet slightly Mm -hmm. or that it can tell you if you've got certain vitamin deficiencies. Uh, I'd love to get a full one of that. I'd be interested in things like food allergies. Yeah. You know, because that can cause inflammation in the gut and stuff like that, foods that you might be eating every single day. Yeah. You know, it's like with this heart thing, they said, uh, the doctor said, look, you know, do you drink much caffeine? I went, uh, yeah, probably do actually. And I've just reduced my coffee to like just two espressos a day. That's all I have now. Giles drinks so much coffee. Well, I've got a beautiful espresso, mach- espresso machine. I love it. So... So, yeah, so I reduced it and I, I've noticed a, a bit of an improvement. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Well, it's um, it's like things like I think a lot of people ignore certain signs, mm-hmm. like, for example, headaches mm-hmm. or if you get things like skin eczema um trying to think like i sometimes get like sores inside my nose yeah. and these are things actually like chronic inflammation which is one of the biggest biggest problems that's going to lead on to like chronic disease like serious disease as yeah. well and and cancer and so on doesn't, doesn't sugar cause a lot of inflammation in the body oh, massively if i have like a cheat meal mm. or if i have a day in sugar sugary foods the next day i wake up with like really red round the eyes oh, right. they're sore and i get all sores in my nose it's like um it's like a crazy reaction but i think that's from damage i've done over the years with like when i used to have binge eating and when i used to go raving and all this kind of thing it's like my body's like okay yeah no more you want diabetes because then you can't have sugar like yeah pardon me sorry (laughs) okay right moving on that's that's really helpful anyway i'm sure a lot of people are thinking about it now well i'm certainly hoping so anyway yeah go go get it done get your blood work done it's important because do it online if you're scared to actually speak to anyone and then stay healthy Get beefy. Don't do drugs. Stay sexy. Be like us. <laughs> right. Moving on. <laughs> Next subject. Okay. Now, obviously, you did the Two Bros Pro a few weeks ago. That was the first Two Bros Pro event um, which Bob Chick and his partners have put on in the UK. Mm-hmm. Now, they've got another one coming up in June. I've asked one of the organizers, Matt Salis, mm-hmm. to give us a little update on the next one. They've moved the venue to Coventry, which uh, looks absolutely, absolutely sensational. So let's go to Matt now, and he's going to tell us about the next Two Bros Pro show. Brilliant. Cool. Check it out. What is up, MD? Hello, Giles. Hello, Rosie. How you doing? Uh, keeping it real in my living room, by the way. Don't ask why I've got a shirt and tie on on a Sunday night. It'll bore you. Um, so I've got an update for you guys. Um, obviously, you've seen or heard the Royal London Pro happen before your eyes a couple of weeks ago in Stratford, London. Um, and I just wanted to give you the heads up on our next event, which is going to be in Coventry at the Rico Arena on the 23rd of June. So we're looking at, I'm pretty sure we're about 10 weeks away now or just over 10 weeks. Um, Yet again, we're going to be awarding overall winners of each division their pro status, access to the pro league in the US, on UK soil, yet again. We're doing what we say. We did it at the ROP, we're gonna do it at this show. So we'd appreciate your support. We've got some posters that we've made up for the UK pro championships. Um, So any of you gyms out there, that would like a post at your gym, please drop us a DM, 2BP events, um, and we can dish out a poster to you guys, no problem. We appreciate your support, and we hope to see you all there in June. Okay, so yeah, Matt Salas. Yeah. Now Rosie, why for several weeks was Matt Salas one of the coolest people in our house? Oh my God, we were like total fan fans, weren't we? For yeah, they, he was on a, a TV program in England called what was it called? SAS. Who dares? Who, who dares? Who dares wins? Yeah, and it was um, basically real SAS. Mm-hmm guys that had had formerly been in the SES, they took on um, these young men like Matt who spent was it a week or 10 days? It was was, because it was like an episode but an episode was just one day. That's how intense it was. 
and it was over like twelve. That whole series was over over like twelve days. Yeah, so twelve episodes over twelve. 10. And we watched it over like two months or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And they were putting them through basically all these different trials, physical and mental, that the yeah, SAS would have to. Yeah, go it, was, through. it was proper SAS training yeah. level of training. So the, some of these lads had no military background. They had. They were literally right. I'm gonna have a go at that. And yeah, but it it was so inspiring. Yeah. It was you were on the edge of your seat, and it it looked into the mentality of each guy. It looked into the background of each guy's family and everything, and and you kind of got an idea of why they had that mental strength to mm. deal with so, this sort of thing, or why some of them didn't succeed. The, yeah. the kind of inner voice that they were having the conflict, but it was really really nice, and it was a change to see young men being um, on TV in a really positive yeah. light and shown as like really good, strong characters with good morals. And yeah, it was really lovely, really awesome program. Let's go to some pictures now, um, which Matt kindly sent. We're kind of to screenshots from the show. So have a look at this. See what he went through. So, and the thing is with Matt, he was one of the ones that was kind of in the background for the first few episodes because he was just getting on with he it. He was quiet. Get he wasn't down. complaining. No. Nope. And we said uh, when it was about three episodes away from the end, we were like, I think that Matt might win, you know, because he's been just quiet, getting on with it. Mm. And it was, uh, yeah, it was awesome to see him win. He was actually on that in one of those photos. That's his twin brother. Now, the twin brother was actually in that series as well. He he kind of, um, he, he handed his, you have to hand in your armband, I think, if you either get, you know, you fail a trial or whatever. Yeah. So he, he was out. So Matt actually got through to the very end. And do you want to say he got joint first. <laughs> yeah, he got joint first with another kid. They did this one trial and it literally, it came down to the wire uh, and they decided to give them both. Yeah, but the other guy was like a bit like a serial killer or something, yeah, wasn't he, he? he? had no empathy. And it was like, they were, they were giving him these, uh, what was it, stories of what would you do? And he just, he just kind of, he could shut himself down emotionally. Yeah. But um, at the Two Bros Pro Show, when you were upstairs the night before the show, you were in the, you know, with your tan and everything, mm. I went down for some food with, uh, with AJ and I sat with Bob Chick and all that lot. And I sat next to Matt and he was, I said, Matt, what was the hardest part of that show? And he said, oh, the interrogation. Mm. He said, the interrogation. And what they do is they, he said, they hadn't fed us for 24 hours before the interrogation. And I think it was either 24 or close to 30 hours of interrogation where they've got hoods over their heads, goggles on. It's, it's sensory deprivation. They have uh, like music and everything and, and like baby crying and these weird noises, repetitive and then noises. Like, it's torture. Uh, hit them with stuff. Like yeah, they throw, because basically you're, you're on the floor, you're in stress holds, and then you're at points where you know, you, they'll come up and they'll just jump you. They'll you know, just throw something at you to keep because you're constant. You can't relax. You can't switch off. And it's it's basically what they use in actual interrogation. It's what yeah. the SAS have to go through. If they don't pass that, and it's funny. Some, some of them lost it though, didn't oh, they? they lost By the, the player, end, yeah. they were yeah. like muttering nonsense. Yeah. And the real SAS guys were like <clears throat> in another room and they were watching, but like laughing, going, he's lost it. He's gone. He's lost his yeah, mind. He's next. He's going. Yeah. It's funny because my uncle was uh, G Squadron ex SAS. He, uh, he was in the, in the SAS for 10 years. And I, was I always talked to him about it. And he was saying, because uh, I was born in Hereford where. Uh, near where I used to live in Wales, well, it's actually classed as England, where um, where the SAS training and the, uh, the base is. And I said to uh, Sister Michael, he says, he says, yeah, he says that the training's pretty tough with SAS. He said it's, you know, I'd like to say every hundred we get, he says, maybe one gets through. He says, but we used to lose two or three a year on training. I said, what do you mean lose them? He says, well, they die. Mm. Freaking die on training. He said, yeah. that's how extreme... Like he said, they'd die of exposure or they'd uh, fall off a cliff. Or yeah. just, you know, they'd, they'd starve to death or, you know, they, they, uh, it's unbelievable what the SAS goes through. I mean, it really is. I mean, the Special Forces, they're just... Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if there's anywhere to download it to watch, but I would definitely mm, recommend God, to... It's fantastic. 
to you. try and find it to save you. Yeah, it was it was a real roller coaster to watch, and I can imagine what it was like as to to be in an experience. So, so Matt, yeah, so I mean, there's Matt, there's a guy who was, um, you know, uh, men's physique, and I thought, you know. My, my opinion of men's physique has completely changed. <laughs> Can't take the mick out of the flicky hair now. No, no, no. This, kid, this kid's a badass. So anyway, yeah, so fantastic. Well done, Matt. We're proud of you. <laughs> okay. Right. The next subject I would like to talk about is the wellness coming to the IFBB Pro ranks. Mm. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I love, wellness is like one of my favourite classes. It's uh, kind of like a physique that, most women, I think, would would uh, be motivated to train for. A lot of the people watching this might be in America. They're not really familiar, say, as we are in Europe, because wellness has been around in the UK for a couple of years and Europe. Yeah. And it's, um, <clears throat> do you want to explain the criteria? Uh, so it, how it compares to, say, figure, physique and bikini? Yes. Yeah, so it's, um, it's more of like a bottom heavy kind of class so you're allowed to have very muscular mm. legs and glutes um upper body is not supposed to be so muscular so it's a bit more like a the typical bikini of, of a few years ago with just a bit yeah. of de- a shoulder definition back i'll tell you how i see it six pack okay you can have a six pack right you can have big chunky thick legs and glutes but then not to be overly muscular and not to be vascular and not to have cuts in the legs. Do you think it's closer to figure or bikini? Say with I, I see it as either I see it as a soft figure with big thick legs. Mm. Is that or do you think it's more of a soft bikini look? Like a fuller, more muscular look? I see it more as like a a fuller bikini. But not the bikini now, the bikini of Natalia Mello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a thicker, chunkier it's like Brazilians. It, 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 to be honest, people joke about this on the on the MD boards, but it is made for those kinds of Brazil. You know, the ones that have just got you've got you've had clients that literally have to stop training their legs yeah. and they're still massive on stage. Yeah, exactly. It's it's just like basically like a Brazilian girl who entered a bikini show, but she's so amazingly gifted in the lower body. She never gets placed because she's too big. Yeah. So it's um it's a beautiful look. And it's a look that is kind of maintainable yeah. all year because it's not – you don't have to be so lean. And for some of – it's going to be the, – the thing is, though, it's a class where certain girls will find it very easy to look like that. Mm-hmm. And if you're not really genetic, genetically made like that – It's hard to train for. Yeah, you can't really force it because, like, for example, me, I can get big legs and I can get big glutes, but my quads get shred like – vascular Mm. and uh, deep cuts Yeah. sometimes even like at the same rate as my abs so like you've you've got to it's also about where your fat distribution is right how you're going to do like can you get a nice tight uh, six pack but soft lower body someone recently somebody actually this week put something to me that actually got me thinking Mm. Um, now I've made my feelings clear about how I feel the pro bikini's gone yeah Uh, I felt the top six at the Arnold beautiful girls absolutely amazing but for me compared to to the look of the Natalia Mello in around 2013 which for me Amanda Latona the perfect, perfect perfect bikini look but not it not even just in the the like recently at the pro but in the UK even in the amateur for the last couple of years they've been mm. getting thinner and thinner I don't yeah. know why it's been happening I don't think they've been getting thinner I think they're becoming softer with less muscle but the what I saw at the Arnold Rosie they were mm. they were quite thin mm. so my this person said to me do you think it's a coincidence that, that the judging of the pro bikini has gone the way where they are getting so thin. Do you think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden the wellness has now been introduced as a pro class? Do you think that's a coincidence or do you think it's completely unrelated? I don't know. It's like I, I, the thing is when um, bikini first came out, it was a kind of, it was <clears throat> quite a, a beautiful, voluptuous look. It was, it was full, yeah. it was full, but athletic. Mm. And it's like, if that's not there anymore, we're missing a trick. Yep. So that's why the wellness maybe has come in because there's a, there's, there's a, a gap, which is just stupid because mm. we, it was there. <laughs> 
<laughs> we had it before with I, the bikini. I said it. I mean, like five years ago, I thought bikini was just they got it right. They got it just right. And yeah. I can keep saying Natalia Melatonin because for me, that is how pro bikini girls. Miss Olympia, whatever, that's how I feel they should look. Yeah, me too. So, um, Natalia anyway. Mello is perfect. How she, when she won the Olympia, that was yeah. like, I remember looking at that and being like, wow. Yeah. Perfect. Well, we'll see what happens with this new class, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I think it'll do really well. I hope they get the criteria fixed and they stick to it. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> we can but wish. <laughs> okay, let's talk about... Now, Rosie, this is another question I'd like to direct to you because you're the only person here, <laughs> apart from me. And, I'm not, and the reason is because I'm not a pro. Okay. Um, Rosie, what does it mean to be a pro? Um, well, I think, like, for me, because I, want, I obviously wanted to get my pro card for so long and there was a couple of arguments that perhaps I could have or should have got it earlier yeah but then when I finally did get it in 2015 I realized that it was perfect timing Mm -hmm. because of many other factors like how I'd matured Mm -hmm. as a person the experience I'd had with competing the experience I'd had within the industry um so I was ready to be a pro not just on stage Mm -hmm. But in everything, the way I conducted myself on yeah. social media, the way that I would conduct myself um, with people, and not just like uh, on the camera, but away from. Mm. It's like I don't think you should be two different people. You need to be authentic and be um, – be held accountable all the time with your behaviour. Like if you're going to be promoting positivity Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, health, all this kind of thing online and on your profile, then you really need to stand by that when you're off camera Mm -hmm. um, and not be, uh, yeah, don't let yourself down, don't let the industry down with... I don't know, like, can you think of any examples? Yeah. I mean, we, I've known you since 2011. We've been a couple since 2013. You know, I I was contacting you when I had my MD column and, you know, and I always found that from my point of view, you were very professional. Mm -hmm. And this was before you were, you didn't turn pro until 2015. But for me, you were more professional in the way you conducted yourself than not saying the other arm, but, you know, you were extra, super professional. You always got, like, I, as a media, I, I, I used to contact all the main athletes, you know, where I was writing my column all around Europe, <clears throat> the Euro Muscle scene that ran in MD from 2010 to 2014. And, um, <clears throat> and sometimes publicity comes down to the ones that actually get back to you, yeah. the ones that actually come through with the news <clears throat> and, the, uh, and the high resolution images, and they, yeah. they, they're organized, you know. And you were one of the ones that always was prompt, polite, professional, you know, and that always sticks in people's minds. For people like myself who've worked in supplement industry that is in charge of things like sponsorships and promotion and choosing who is to represent that brand Mm. and also who to feature and who to promote. So who do you think think they're going to go to? The ones that you have to chase who, or the ones that haven't ever got any photos or any updates or you have to try and track them down. So for me, from my point of view, as someone that has worked in the media for 24 years and promotes athletes and gives opportunity to athletes, yeah. I think it's so important to be like a Flex Lewis. Yeah, I think it's... Or a DLB. It's about being really kind of in love with what you're doing and passionate about what you're doing um, and being ready for opportunities and yes. grateful for opportunities create them creating opportunities and being grateful for you know you don't have to do everything if something doesn't suit you and you don't want it and the terms don't suit you you don't have to be a pushover so i'm doing a guest spot in um later in the year yeah. and the promoter um messaged me um asking for a load of details and i messaged back straight away and said yeah you'll have it all by the morning Mm -hmm. and i messaged in the morning with everything that he'd asked for and he messaged back with wow i wish everyone was so efficient Mm -hmm. and quick it would make things a lot easier but for me that was like standard Standard, yeah it's standard and it's like replying to people Mm -hmm. quickly um it's like if any if any of my if anyone 
messaged me someone I'd, I, I didn't know them and they wanted any advice or anything like that they would always get a really kind response off me if anyone met me in person I would give anyone the time of day and it's things mm. like that because you you are you are kind of like inspiring people and people mm-hmm. are looking up to you for yeah. for many many reasons absolutely um so it's yeah it's never, being held accountable for things yeah so it's interesting from your point of view as a pro and from my point of view as someone that <clears throat> potentially gives opportunities to and creates opportunities and opens doors for the, for the pros you know so i've got i've kind of we've kind of got a good um good base of opinion there you know so it's important i mean it's just I'll be honest, you know, when I'm writing columns or I'm doing shows like this or it's the ones that get back to you, the ones that are like eager, the ones that will keep send you updates when you you haven't even asked for them. Yeah. You know, that is what creates opportunity. That's what opens doors that will get you sponsorship, get you contracts, get you it'll move you forward because being a pro bodybuilder and being a successful pro bodybuilder is not just about winning pro shows. You can win 100 pro shows and if you're not professional to work with and professional in promoting yourself off the stage, you are going to close yourself off. And to never get too big for your boots. Yeah. Because the minute you think that you're too good for uh, other people and that you think that you're owed something, it's pretty much the minute that you're going to start going down. It might be a slow descent, but it'll happen, I think. Ego. Yeah. Once the ego gets, gets hold of you, that's it. You're pretty much closing off that window of opportunity so um you know like someone like flex lewis has never changed you know i've never actually met dlb but i've always heard good things about her Mm. and do you think it's a coincidence that people like her and jay cutler these people who aren't even competing anymore have still got so much opportunity coming their way and people are still talking about and people are still buying their products people are still sort of enthusiastic you know they're still getting they're still selling magazines when they're on front covers Mm. so give it some thoughts we're trying to help you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Now, obviously, I want to talk about episode 10 of the Tiger Rascal Show, which mm-hmm. went up this week. Yay. What do you think? Yeah, really good. Um, it was interesting to watch back the footage of my competition mm-hmm. um, with some different eyes. Yeah. Uh, put these ones on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a um, good episode. Mm. It was a... I thought I looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. You did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is our, if, you, if you've not, this is the first episode you've seen of this show, the MD Muscle News Weekly Show. We have, myself and Rosie have a, a YouTube show called the Tiger Rascal Show on Rosie's YouTube channel, Rosie Rascal. Uh, check it out. We're all, we've, we've banged out 10 episodes since Tampa last year. So it's averaging about one a month. This is something I film, edit, do everything. Um, Rosie provides even the music. So the music you'll hear in an episode 10, it'll, I mean, the credits come up. That's Rosie. She's written, recorded, performed. Um, so it is literally a, <laughs> it's a group effort between us two. So it's a very small group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a labor of love. And it's, uh, it's a lot of, in fact, I want to go to my favorite bit. Yeah. Now, this actually cuts into a part of my interview with Lee Priest, at the Arnold Expo, which talks about something that happened at my house between me and Lee in 2006. <laughs> I'm watching this. This is class. Time you feel me snoring. Yes, you're snoring very loud, but I think I think that was really just some of my cum still stuck in your throat. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it was. I mean, it was, it was like Blair Witch. It was at night. He had the night vision camera on, and he because um, he brought your friend Mark, and I said, "You guys have to my two bedrooms. I'll have the sofa." And I just competed twice. So all I wanted to do was get drunk every night. And yes. like anyway, so Lee puts the camera on himself, you know, with like the, uh, the night vision, and he's like, "Look, Giles has been. This is this is. It was at Richter scale eight or something." I think so. Well, the first because we were actually in Newcastle. I'm from Newcastle, in Australia. Giles is from Newcastle on time. I actually thought fucking Nessie had come down the river. I thought I found luck. I found I found luck Ness, but it was you. I thought I was going to make a fortune. Driving slow. I'm gonna sneak out. Get him on tape. 
So that's uh, Lee in my house filming me snoring. Lee is hilarious. <laughs> Brilliant. That was uh, that was such a good memory. That was such a good trip. It was such a good week we had that time, and it was uh, it was really good to catch up with him at the Arnold and get that interview. And I mean, it's up to like seventy two thousand views or something now, and it's um, it's good because it's a good combination of silly and you know outrageous, as, which is Lee. But also, we, we managed to get into some good subjects yeah. about, about yeah. family and where he's at in life. And uh, it's, a, it's an interview I feel really proud of that I was, you know, lucky to be a part of. Mm. So, um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I'd like to talk next about your MD column. Yes. So, um, was I shouting then? No. Okay. So. It's a uh, written. 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 And in crayon. In crayon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to, to the quill <laughs> shortly. Um, yeah, uh, so it's going to be a typical rascal mm. themes. So I'm always obviously interested in health yep. and uh, mental health and the power of the mind. So it's going to be, I just want to share anything that I think is useful or helpful to anyone, um, things that I've learned over the last... 14 years. And another assumption a lot of people make with my history, you know, working in the magazine industry for 24 years is that I have not ghostwritten this. This is Rosie's work. She, she, I'll always check her work, maybe, you know, just because her magazine's like a lot of sub paragraphs and sections like that. But Rosie writes that all herself. I mean, she, she's very, so thick. Clever. She's very clever. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that's really fat. But no, but you know what I mean. It's um, it's a really good column, and I've seen it. I've seen the layout. It looks amazing. And also, they used a couple of your images from your TT images. A yeah. photographer called Tony Thompson. Tell us about that. Yeah, I had a shoot with. Uh, in fact, I've sh- uh, shot with him uh, twice now. A guy lives l- over in Scotland. Tony Thompson. Very he good. got in touch with me, and he used to be a fashion photographer, and then he wanted to get into the the world of fitness photography. And I said, yeah, sure, let's do a shoot. Um, The first one was incredible. The image was really good. And then he wanted to do another. And wow. The first one was after Tampa, when you came back from Tampa, wasn't it, last August? Yeah, yeah. But this second shoot, he's really upped his game again. And actually, I think, watch out for his name as Mm. a photographer in the industry because he's really quite special the way that he can direct the model Mm. and the way that he can uh, catch the right angle of the body um is very very special gift i'd say he's close to achieving the level of work of say kevin horton a per banal and a British uh, bodybuilding photographer called Chris Bailey. Now, for me, those three are the elite photographers in the business. Now, Charles Lothian, another one. And this guy, he's... You see, sometimes you'll get photographers, because I'm a photographer. I've, been, I've done photography since I was like 17, 16, 17. Been all over the world shooting Olympias. And... Um, it's funny because sometimes you get these photographers who come into the industry and technically the photos are absolutely amazing. Mm. But they don't know... like how to make a bodybuilder look its best, what angles, what yeah. will make the, the the waist look small, how yeah. to flatter the physique, the I've face, had, the lighting. I've had some pretty weird photo shoots. Technically good, but in from me, from my point of view, I'm like, no, no. Yeah, that's... like the, sh- the angles are just not right. Like, they, like I've got a really small waist, but somehow on certain photos, <laughs> I'll have a really... Remember that picture that went in the magazine that time? Oh, the thick waist that happened to thigh. Oh, no, it's awful. It was just like, it's nearly sent me to tears that I just thought, why is that picture gone in? But it's not just about those photos, it's the photo selection as well. Because yeah. like sometimes you can get a shoot and take, say, 500 pictures, and it's, you know, there will be a lot that aren't suitable, that don't make your physique look good, but it's a ma- there will be some that do. So sometimes it's not just about the photographer, it's who selects the pictures as well. The worst pictures that I've ever seen of myself are the ones when I'm doing a guest spot, so I'm midway through a routine. Oh. 
and it's like the facial expressions that they catch sometimes are just yeah well thing is you, yeah but you're doing your guess what you're jumping all over the place it's like a fitness routine her, her guest posings are they're like fitness routine where she's jumping and doing splits and so it is so you've got to give a bit of leeway there right? yeah <laughs> so anyway okay well in fact, let's go to some footage from the Tiger and Rascal show from the recent shoot that Rosie did with Tony Thompson. Have a look at this. And that, the music in the background is Rosie singing as well. So have a look. Yeah. Have a look at this. Tiger photo shoot with Tony Thompson, TT at Ultra Flex, the best gym in Yorkshire. Do you enjoy that shoot? Absolutely loved it. I couldn't be bothered going when I first, because I'd just done my show a few days yeah. before and I was like, Giles, oh, I'm not in the mood. Obviously, <laughs> I was going to go. I wasn't. would never have cancelled. But you know, when you just think, oh, I don't feel really in the mood for this. But then as soon as I got there, because Tony's such a cool guy and we get on. So, yeah, I was so pleased that we managed to book it. Because we were actually supposed to shoot the week before, but I got snowed in. We both got snowed in and we couldn't do it. So it was like... Oh, I was in Columbus, wasn't Yeah, it? so it was luck, really, that we managed to re rearrange it. I was at the Arnold. Anyway, okay, now I want to talk about something now that... Uh, something pretty traumatic that happened to me and Rosie six months ago. This was in San Marino. Um, our property was damaged. Mm. Um, we were... We were Quite frankly, we were terrified for our lives, weren't we, Rosie? Yeah, we, we didn't want to file a police report because we just were scared of what would, what might happen mm. after that. Yeah, mm. so, and I, I feel ready to talk about it now. We've had some counselling. Yeah, we've had some counselling. So, um, uh, well, I'll say what, it, I'll, I'll say we were the victims of... Rami Rage! <laughs> <laughs> Watch this, this is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Check his name. You don't miss anything? I see mine. 
So next week, we see Rami in a red skirt. Next week. That's Rosie's. That's mine. Rami was going to take your bag. Rami was going to take your bag? That's disgraceful. And they've broken the handle. <laughs> I can see it's all crushed. Oh, Rami, that's, I'm not having that, mate. Ooh, wait, wait till I see him next time. Oh, there he is. You want to check me in all the bag? Okay, well, um, yeah, so, yeah, that was obviously, obviously a huge, hilarious joke. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, Rami, what? Uh, yeah, he. But he did actually break my. Yeah, he case. broke it. He broke it. Or someone did anyway with it. <laughs> but it was quite funny, wasn't it? Because because we were picking him up and then then he couldn't get his luggage in and he pulled Rosie and he crunched it. <laughs> yeah. As you saw in the clip there, his so. big superhero hands. So uh, yeah, he was. Um, he's funny, isn't he, Rami? Yeah, he's, 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 I'm really Rami. warm into him. after that Arnold Europe because um, you know, he didn't compete summary and he was just there. But we saw him win the Arnold Europe and when he did his speech. Um, talking about, uh, yeah, yeah. His, uh, and actually, he looks really, I thought he looked really healthy and looked really, like for a big guy, mm. like I thought he looked really well and, yeah, yeah impressive. Yeah. We love Rami. Um, do you think he'll win the Olympic this year? Well, seeing as last week we said that it was going to be Phil winning it, I can't <laughs> <laughs> now this week say, mm, yeah, right, I can't swap. Hey, things teams. change, things change, Rosie, things change. I've got a feeling he's going to come second again. Right. So pretty similar to last year. Really. Yeah. Things with Rami, he's imp he's improving, and I, I do, you know, it's, but it's whether I don't know. What don't do you know. think about Nathan Deasher? Where do you think his placing is going to come this <laughs> well, year? He's actually next on my list to talk about Nathan Deasher because he's actually on the front cover of the new MD. Yeah. Which I'll show right now. Yeah, so that's Nathan on the front cover of MD, which is a pretty pretty old school kind of hardcore bodybuilding uh, image, isn't it? So he must be buzzing off that though, eh? Being yeah, on the yeah. front cover. Isn't there's, it? A, there's been a lot of change for Nathan. In fact, I'm trying to get some updates from next week. We'll maybe get yeah. that included in next week's show. That'd be cool. So um, yeah, so Nathan. Um, well, I personally had Nathan fifth at the Olympia last year. Uh, he was seventh. Uh, I had him swapping with Roden, Sean Roden. Well, uh, do you think he's going to be up to like fifth, fourth place in this time? He could be. He could. Will he beat Bonac? He could. We. I. Th I. I would like to see him in the top five mm. because he's gone from twelfth to seventh mm. to fifth, and both those years when he got twelfth and seventh, you know, arguably he could have been two or three spots higher. Yeah, yeah. You know, because he's got. He's just. I don't know. It's whether he can keep up that rate of improvement. If he can and keep the waist small, then the sky is the limit for Nathan Diasha. And the thing is, he's been getting a bit uh, larry on Instagram. You know, he's been. Um, I think he's trying to build a bit of hype for the show. Yeah, it's hilarious. He's having. He's calling out Juan Morel and all these other guys, and and it is. It is. I mean, it's it's funny. It is funny, and it, I can. Some people get all offended and upset by stuff like that, but I, to me, I see it as just good banter. And I think it's really funny. I think yeah. it's. And the thing is, it's like I'm. I'm sort of building a bit of uh, interest between. Between Gerald and Luke Sando and Sasson Harati, because they're all going into the Cali Pro, and you know they're all friends of ours. And they, well, you know, the thing is, like, they'll be the front runners in, in other sports like boxing and stuff. They all do oh, this. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like remember the days when we had Ronnie and Jay, and there'd be Lee Haney and Leela Brada, and we had um, you know uh, Phil and J and uh, Kai. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's. It, I'll be honest. The, the Olympia isn't quite as exciting without Although the their, Kai. their banter was not really banter, was it? It was. Uh, yeah, they got a bit nasty. <laughs> like, yeah, they actually hated each other, didn't they? <laughs> Yeah, but then again, I think it was. Uh, I think a lot. Even then, I think it is like I've seen pictures of them training together. Mm. You know, there was a gym in, one in Birmingham. Oh yeah, after, yeah, uh, they're training uh, together, having pictures together and stuff. So it's like sometimes you can take it with a pinch of salt mm. and take it for what it is. Yeah. It's entertainment. It's tr at the end of the day, it gets people talking about events that are coming up that need to, you know, that they, people want to see. You know, people want to see that. I want to see the rivalries. I love yeah. it. You know, and, and you know, it, I think it's fantastic. I love it. So, um, yes, so next, oh, you just took away my next subject, it was Diasha, so we've talked about him. Um, 
On other subjects other than bodybuilding, mm. I watched The Last Jedi again the other night. I know. In 3D at I home. Know, I know. Why? Because Giles came in to the bedroom wearing his 3D glasses, hiccuping after his glass of wine. <laughs> and because so, I was going, lies. I was going to bed early because I didn't want to wait watch the Star Wars again. And then at about one o'clock in the morning, I get woken up because the, the Star Wars film is blaring full blast. So I went in to ask him to turn it down, and he's just sat there like a kid with his <laughs> 3D glasses on, like <laughs> watching it with. Full blast. <clears throat> well, Star Wars. I'm sorry. That's a, it's a very important thing to me. Star Wars is like you know a big part of my childhood. And um, and the thing is, I was very anxious to see this film the second time because the first time I saw it, I didn't know what to make of it. I I, I was gripped, but it wasn't what I expected. So and I had this fe- I had this feeling, this this voice in my head saying, you, you know, I think you're going to like it the more you watch it. I watched it again and I got <laughs> it. I know I did. I got it, and I really respect because. I think the the Force Awakens was almost too predictable. It was too formulaic, like a Star Wars film. It was basically like a remake of the original. You know, if you, it, they played it safe. And I think with this one, they kind of Ryan Johnson completely turned it on its head. You know, he killed off Luke Skywalker. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen that. And you know, they did some really quite big things that I think we were not expecting. Even when he went chucked the lightsaber, you know, that was it. Was just I was shocked by that. So for me. To watch that again and, and appreciate it for what it is, for me, I think it was a really bold film, and I and I and I love it now, and I and I'm really glad because, you know, for the Star Wars, you know, the films to go off and into something I don't recognise is something that I I would be quite upset by, you know, because mm-hmm. it was a big part of my childhood, you know, Star Wars. I was at the Star Wars toys, and I just love Star Wars. I <laughs> love Star Wars. So uh, almost as much as I love Batman, which I'll be talking about next week. Yeah, but I used to have, um, my brother had a, a toy of Ewok right. and I took it off him and I, <laughs> and I and I married Ewok to my bear called Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, no. I put my mum's earrings in the in both of the bear's ears <laughs> and married them. And my brother was absolutely fuming because oh, I'd be... married Daisy and Ewok. Oh, my God. So that's my uh, connection with Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think we better wrap up now. Um, <laughs> I think we've talked enough this week about <laughs> many, many different subjects of the sport. So um, I would like our friend... Seti. to see us out now he hasn't sent us this video I've actually just stolen it off his Instagram fine so fine. but it was such a belter I thought it'd be a really good way to end the show um, and uh, yeah because we just love that yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway okay well thanks for watching thanks for supporting um, loving working on this show and bringing the news and views and everything that's going on around the world with Rosie no, you Rascal can... Rosie Rascal and Charles Thomas. Bye. See you next week, everyone. Bye. So my knees no longer ache with that beat for goodness sake. And my tired eyes lit wide, going down memory lane. Showing up and dancing, jiving, doing the swing. As I start to reminisce, my feet they start to twitch and I go.